each commissioner to please respond with a here when I call out their name. Commissioner Doan? Here. Commissioner Duggan? Here. Commissioner Lysak? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Next, we'll have reports by the CEO and management staff. Good evening, President Fisher and commissioners. We have a pretty brief meeting tonight, uh, so I'll get right through the CEO announcements. Uh, first, uh, outreach event coming up. Uh, TVWD customers and a small group of Portland customers, uh, customers of Portland Water Bureau, uh, have an opportunity to attend and learn about the Taylor's Ferry Reservoir Project. Tapney Inc., which is the contractor we've selected, and uh, the district's uh, project team will be available on Wednesday, September 25th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the reservoir site. Uh, this event will provide information on the upcoming two-year construction cycle for that reservoir. It'll start in October uh, this year, uh, so this will be an opportunity for the community to be involved. Uh, the site is located on the eastern edge and the Metzger service area, eastern edge of the district's uh, boundary in Metzger. Although it doesn't serve Portland Water Bureau customers, there are a lot of those customers that are in the immediate area, and they will experience the construction activity. Uh, so the project team uh, aims to involve them in the public outreach as well. And as always, commissioners are welcome to attend, especially if you happen to be in the Metzger I'll, area. I will be attending. All right. Quick update on our legislative event. Uh, so we did have a our legislative event. Uh, Commissioner uh, Sanders was kind enough to act uh, on behalf of the of the board. There, uh, we held at the water treatment plant on October 29th. We had uh, two members of the U.S. House of Representatives, Representative Bonamici and Representative Salinas, were there. Uh, we also had, uh, in addition to Commissioner Sanders, who spoke on behalf of TVW, in fact, was the MC for the event. We also heard from uh, the mayors of Beaverton, Hillsborough, and Sherwood uh, about the role in the project. So it was a great event. Uh, the weather was perfect. And thank you, Commissioner Sanders, uh, for uh, representing TVWD and uh, providing uh, overall support and being the MC of the event. Uh, the event did allow TVW to showcase uh, the progress we've had on the WWSS and uh, to provide our, our partners an opportunity to have a little bit of quality time with two members of the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, talking Water, speaking of talking, we're going to have an upcoming Talking Water events, communications on our rate process. Uh, so the next increase in water rates is effective November 1st, 2024. Uh, you might remember that the board adopted two rate increases, which has been our recent practice, uh, two rate increases back last September, and this will be the second one that takes effect. We've scheduled the Talking Water virtual forum uh, to prepare customers for the rate increase that's coming. Uh, the dates are September 30th from 12 until 1, and then October 10th, 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, each forum will feature the same content, so you needn't attend both a uh, customer will get the same information if they attend either one of them. The district's website has a link uh, to join the meeting. And of course, some commissioners are welcome to join that as well. With that, tonight's uh, director's report is actually. Oh, thank you. One more uh, piece of breaking news. We just uh, learned this afternoon that um, do you have the add to our legislative event? Thank you, Justin. Flip it. Uh, <laughs> at our legislative event that we had, uh, we were presented uh, this check signed by President Joe Biden uh, oh. from um, uh, Representative uh, Bonamici's staff brought that to us. Uh, we've been waiting for the technical correction. You took action. The WWSS board took action to to make that. It's been held up in Congress, waiting for it to go through a finance committee of some type there. We just were notified today that it has finally been approved and it is moving forward. So we have our technical correction completed. And this is uh, great news. Thank you, Justin. Unfortunately, the check's now void because it should be made out to the WWSS. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, why don't you get the Sharpie right now and endorse right. the back of it? <laughs> An idea. I, I think we want to stay out of jail as oh, it is. Boy. 
But with that, uh, turn over to uh, Tim Boylan, our chief information officer, who's going to be presenting tonight's department report. Tim. Uh, good evening. So for tonight's uh, update, it's been quite a while since I've had an opportunity to brief you all on what's going on with IT and some of the projects and initiatives. So um, we'll start with a little bit of an introduction and orientation to what we're focused on, and I'll dip a little bit into what's going on with the team and some of the key projects. So one of the key concepts that I want to make sure and, and remind uh, you all about is that the IT team has been focused on modernizing our environment based on three key principles. These are the same principles I brought to the board back in 2018, and they've been our guidepost for how we look at the implementation of technology ever since. So the first one is it's focusing on a cloud first strategy for applications and services. This is really based around the idea that with cloud services, we get the applications out of our data center. It makes them more secure through more rigorous vendor controls. We get some contractual language to enforce and support our objectives. And it also gives our employees some flexibility that if they, they're simply uh, based, if the applications are based here in the building, they're a little tougher to get to than if they're in the cloud. So it's it's resiliency, it's flexibility, it's security, and it's a, it's a better cost profile. Um, the second one is to purchase best of breed commercial products as opposed to developing our own. TVWD's IT team is a relatively small team. Building custom applications on a large scale is just not sustainable, whether it's from uh, staffing and training, it's changes in technology, it's changes in services out in the world. It's just, it would be an undue burden. So we've really shifted into the third bullet, which is purchasing commercial products and focusing on integrating those together to get the best out of the data. And then really focusing on business intelligence and system integration. So with that in mind, this biennium have been, been focusing on several high priority goals. Number one is, uh, as you probably remember, we deferred a lot of technology investment during the CIS project. We didn't want to impact that project by shifting out networks and servers and technology in the middle of it. So we deferred um, a lot of our, our renewals for things like wireless access points and network switches and servers and things of that nature. So this biennium, we're focused on addressing that and getting the technology stack back up to par with where it needs to be. Uh, we're also focused in the process of doing that, including more cybersecurity uh, capabilities and features. So with new network gear, with new server gear, that comes with a certain level of cybersecurity that we didn't have before and gives us a good base on upon which to build going forward. Um, we as an organization are not quite ready to dive headfirst into business intelligence. But what we're doing this biennium is setting up the technology infrastructure and data feeds that allow us to pivot into better use of our data. So for us, that means building a data warehouse, a server and database where we can feed data from all our disparate systems and use that as a common area where we could do things like producing dashboards or reports or mine that for analytics. And then finally, uh, we, we subscribe to Microsoft products and services, but just like any other organization, we only make use of a fraction of their capabilities. Um, it's rare for somebody to use every feature of every Microsoft product. And one of the things we want to focus on is getting all the value we can out of every dollar we spend on services, whether it's Teams or Outlook or Excel or SharePoint, all these, all these different tools at our disposal. They're very powerful, but to get the value out of them, we need to put some focus on learning and educating the, the district's user base. So with that orientation, I want to talk just a little bit about what's going on right now. So for the technology refresh in our data center, we're replacing our old server stack and our old storage environment with new servers and new storage. Um, as of today, we are just about, it's a little higher than 78 because we just did another server on Monday. Um, 
we're, we're real close to 80% complete. Um, in, this, in this project, our goals are to increase our capacity, increase performance, enable more flexibility and increase our security footprint. And so we went and bought a new server stack. And what you see in this picture is the bottom half is our legacy server stack, which included about 90 virtual servers in that equipment. The top part of that picture is the new server stack. It includes about 125 servers and a smaller footprint with much more capacity. So it'll give us the ability to run for the next four to five years with plenty of headroom to adjust whatever the changing needs of the district are. And they work a lot faster and they put out a lot more data. The other big thing that we're getting ready to do is to refresh our network. Uh, the network that's in place here, the wireless network, the firewalls, um, everything that connects all the employees and all the services was here when I started and I just celebrated my seven year anniversary last week. So they're past due for replacement. Um, so we're planning three major upgrades. What we're calling the network perimeter, it's a replacement for our firewall, uh, the network switches and the network access points. So we're treating those as three separate projects. Um, the goals again are make sure they're resilient. The network is really the foundation of how employees connect, whether they're using their mobile device to execute a work order in the field or in the office, or a laptop to do a Teams meeting, or a workstation to execute Esri map updates. Everything relies on the network. It's the one common theme that every employee uses in some fashion. So it's really critical that it's always up, it's running, and it's performing. So the whole project is designed to increase our capabilities. Um, the drawing that I threw up there is, is at the beginning of the biennium, we built a or purchased a uh, a wireless mapping and, and planning tool. We're using it for the Willamette supply system to do wireless and network planning on a building that doesn't exist yet. It allows us to choose equipment, choose the composition of the studs, choose drywall or plaster. It allows us to put all the variables in and then design an environment and test it virtually. So this is how we've done all the development and testing for the, the treatment plant, the raw water facility, anywhere there's going to be a network at the Willamette, we've used this tool. We've also used it here to model what our future generation network will look like with a high degree of confidence that we'll have the coverage and the performance that we're looking for. So those are the two really key technology refresh projects. Um, the next thing I want to touch base on really quickly is what's going on with our team. So I mentioned on the first slide that we are looking to increase our ability to leverage our spend on Microsoft products and services. Um, one of the uh, changes we're making on the IT team to increase our application support capacity is we've taken Tomas from the help desk and we've moved him into a new role as an application administrator. He's going to be focused on being our Microsoft guru, uh, getting the most out of SharePoint, Teams, all our Microsoft products. What that did is, is gives him the ability to go deeper and really focus on helping the district make progress on the tools that we have at our disposal. That opened up a spot, so we just hired a new help desk person. His name is Andrew Torres, and today was his first day. So he's just getting his feet under him, kind of learning the environment. Um, and we'll bring him in to, to meet all of you because he'll be doing your support uh, on your devices going forward. And then one of the things that we have is uh, we, we lost one of our team members. He had to move back in support of his family out of the area. So Tong is not with us anymore. Um, and so we have an open position there. And one of the things we're doing is we're taking a look at the technology roadmap and then through what's coming through our strategic planning process, going to get a better feel for for where we're headed as a district before we make a decision on how to fill that. Right now, my current thinking is to tweak the job description a little bit and really increase the, the scope of responsibility for cybersecurity topics. 
Today, cybersecurity is dis distributed among the team. So uh, our network, Mark Gallagher, our network person is responsible for network security. David is responsible for cybersecurity. The data and applications team is responsible for data and application security. So we've, we've, we've spread out the responsibility to make sure all our bases are covered. But we have a need for somebody that can help wrangle all those pieces and make sure that we're we're working to plan. So we're we're probably going to be coming back and explaining a little more about our cybersecurity stance in a future meeting. I will be touching on that in just a moment, though. One of the things we're spending a lot of time on right now is ramping up the uh, projects related to the Willamette system. So. The IT team has six active projects, one for outfitting the raw water facility and all its technology, one for the water treatment plant and all its technology, uh, building out and, and supporting the development of the SCADA infrastructure, uh, the security system that will be going in at all the facilities. We're developing an electronic operations and maintenance system. Um, instead of having plastic binders, it'll be an electronic system where we store manuals, pictures, as-built diagrams, things of that nature. So the operators at the plant have electronic references at their disposal as they do their day to j jobs. Um, that system is built on top of SharePoint in our Microsoft tenant, so it'll be available both in the treatment plant as well as remotely. So we can be really collaborative about how we maintain that information. Um, and then the other one is the computerized maintenance management system, CMMS, our work order system in CityWorks. And we'll be implementing that for, for the treatment plan as well. So our primary responsibilities in all these projects are really to do a lot of the design, procurement, and implementation. There's a lot of equipment that needs to be purchased. There's a lot of collaboration with the Hillsborough IT team. So we're meeting with them to plan out how do uh, Hillsboro staff get back to the resources they need? How do TVWD staff get to the resources they need? So it's a very collaborative environment where we have two groups of employees that need resources, both in the treatment plant and the raw water facility, as well as back at their home agencies. So we're building the, uh, the map right now, and we'll be going to procurement in the next few months to, to make sure we have plenty of lead time to get the uh, the equipment and services purchased, uh, contracted for, and installed. And then my final topic I want to touch base on is, is, is a little bit of a layer both for TVWD and for, uh, for the Willamette supply system. So we have a, a series of steps and a roadmap for cybersecurity. This is a summary of, of where we're going. So. The very first step in our security roadmap is to complete our technology refresh to make sure we have new network and new server infrastructure that will support the cybersecurity settings and initiatives that we want to focus on. We begin the process of renewing our cybersecurity insurance within the next 60 days. That's due at the end of the year because um, that'll kick in at the first of the year. Uh, we're completing our, our five year AWIA assessment. And then th those are more task oriented. And then in support of, of better understanding our security profile and getting to some of our goals, we've reached out to CISA, which is the Cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency, the federal agency that provides cybersecurity for a whole portfolio of, uh, well, a whole portfolio, of, I was gonna say, different domains. They have water, they have energy, they have natural gas, they have utilities. Um, so they offer services across the board. Um, these are free services. And I'll show just in, in the next slide here a little bit about what we're doing to engage with them. Um, based on what we learned through these engagements, we're gonna be taking a fresh look and updating our policy procedure and response plans, and then moving into things like tabletop exercises to test our systems, test our staff, and then implement some updated employee training. So CISA offers seven key services to uh, organizations like TVWD. The two that we are gonna take advantage of right off the bat are, are cybersecurity performance goals and cybersecurity scans. 
Um, they are going to actually be scanning our network from the outside, probing for vulnerabilities and giving us reports on a monthly basis. They'll give us some advice on what they find. Um, quite honestly, I'm not expecting to see anything significant because we do this today for our uh, PCI certification. But having a federal agency take a look at us and give us their their review is always valuable because if they do happen to see something, it gives us the ability to remediate it before it becomes an issue. Um, the performance goals is really an evaluation of our entire cybersecurity program, um, documentation, best practices, uh, settings for equipment, things of that nature, and then give us some guidance around how to structure the next steps in our evolution. And then once we finish those two, we'll start talking about dipping into these other services they offer. One of the one of the interesting ones is the one in the middle on the bottom, which is external dependency management. Um, that one, I don't know how they do it, but I'm really interested because essentially what they will do is take a look at your supply chain and tell you tell us where our vendors represent cybersecurity threats to us. So they would look at um, people that we integrate with, people that we accept data from, partner agencies, and take a look at our entire ecosystem because threats come from all directions. So if we've hired a vendor to connect to us or that we exchange data with, they'll take a look and essentially give us a review of whether or not we should beef up any security settings or, or policies with the vendors. So it looks outside of just our organization a little more broadly. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to show is through working with CISA, they, they provided me some slides and, for, and information. And their perspective is that 10% of the fixes you can implement will lower your risk by 90%. And they came up with four key concepts that would reduce your cybersecurity risk. That's multi-factor authentication for all your systems, up to keeping your software up to date, using strong passwords, and a, an education program that teaches employees to think before you click and not click on harmful attachments. So what I wanted to show through this column is whether or not we have this implemented here and whether we've already accounted for it in the uh, plans for both SCADA and corporate networks for WWSS. So we have all four of those in place today for TBWD, and they've also made it into the documentation uh, that we're reviewing with the management committee for the WWSS. Now, on top of CISA's four key things, I also looped in four other ones that I think are really important. Those are network segmentation, making sure your networks are separate enough that, that unwanted activity cannot cross network boundaries. One is change control. Don't allow changes in your environment unless they're known, managed, and, and really well documented. Um, monitoring, they didn't have monitoring on their their recommendation list, but it's important for us to keep an eye on traffic that's moving back and forth, behavior patterns of applications, really understanding and keeping an eye on what's going on in the environment. And then finally, really common sense, where there are security settings, turn those on. Many vendors like Microsoft or some of our other uh, enterprise applications they don't come with every security setting turned on by default. So we have to go through a process of auditing and toggling those on to ratchet down and making sure that they're as secure as they can be for how we happen to use those. So um, I want to provide some level of confidence that we're already doing all these recommended steps and we're already planning for those uh, as we head into the Willamette supply. So I know that was a broad range of topics. It was kind of a shotgun approach, but I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Glad you're here too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Very compelling. So I'd like to just uh, throw one compliment Tim's way. Pretty much every conference I go to where CISA is there, the attitude is, why aren't you guys calling us in? It's a free service from the Department of Homeland Security. You're already paying for it. Uh, we can we can provide help. And Tim, I think you're the first one's actually of, of our peers has really brought them in. And it's 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 a really important step to harden our 
our processes, just as Tim indicated. So kudos to you, Tim, for, for doing that. I think it's a very important step for TBWD. I wish more of our peer agencies would do the same thing. I'll just give you my impression, which is that we're miles ahead of any of our peers. I mean, I have no fear that we're going to get hacked. We will get hacked, but it's going to be a hard hack. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, so uh, keep up the good work. And, and if you need more resources, let us know. I'll be heading to a conference next month and about three quarters of the sessions that I'm attending have some relationship to cybersecurity um, and then cybersecurity and artificial intelligence because those two are a very dangerous combination. So it's it's an evolving landscape and there's a lot going on. So we're trying to keep our head above water. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, well, <clears throat> President Fisher, that concludes the Chief Executive Officer Report okay. Management Staff. We will now move into Commissioner Communications. Uh, the Commissioners will now report on recent meetings attended. By starting, okay. Uh, I just tonight's meeting. That's that's it. It was a, it was a quiet week, which I spent recuperating from my header. Last uh, last meeting. Uh, for my report, uh, last Wednesday evening, I attended two Zoom meetings that overlapped. It was quite an adventure with two devices, um, but I was asked uh, by uh, uh, Commissioner Miles Pasnos from the Tualatin Valley, uh, Tualatin Hills Park and Recreation District to uh, um, not just be the alternate, be the voting member. Um, so I, I showed up for that meeting, um, seeing that fortunately all the, the business end of stuff was going to be done before the start of my second meeting that night, which was the Regional Water Providers Consortium Executive Committee. Um, unfortunately, even though I was there as a, a voting member, they did not have a quorum, so they couldn't present, pr uh, process their business agenda items, but uh, Basically, the, the meeting still centered on the urban growth boundary uh, process expansion in the Sherwood area and the concerns that uh, various constituents have um, with either advocating for or uh, having problems with uh, expanding the urban growth boundary in that area. So um, more to come on that. It's a, a decision that the, the Metro Board will be making later this year, but the impact will be making a formal recommendation um, either later this month or at the October, October meeting. Uh, for the Regional Water Providers Consortium meeting, which uh, fortunately, again, all the business stuff was done for uh, impact before I had to go to the executive committee for the Regional Water Providers Consortium. We just uh, received uh, uh, program updates and uh, plans for, for the budget for the upcoming uh, fiscal year, the budget concepts that are, are being worked on and the various uh, initiatives that the uh, consortium um, might be uh, enacting. But it sounds like the city of Portland staff have a, a lot to deal with right now with their transition in, in form of government and all the other things that are going on at the city of Portland. So uh, it's going to be a busy, busy year for them. Um, last night I attended the uh, Washington County Committee for Citizenship Involvement meeting um, where they discussed uh, the CPO uh, modernization initiative that they have going on right now. A lot of the uh, citizenship participant participation organizations uh, have been uh, operating under a set of rules that were developed 30 plus years ago. So they're in the, in the process of tweaking a few things, bringing them up to date. Um, and then they also briefly discussed uh, the issues with the significant natural resource area um, ordinances that are going to be considered by the full Washington County Board uh, later this year. And then tonight's meeting. So that's what I have for, for the for Commissioner Wiser. Tonight's meeting. Commissioner Sanders. Let's see. 
Um, let's see, on the 23rd of August, I met with Paul and um, I don't want to call him other Justin, but the other Justin, the one that's uh, not sitting here looking at us right now, uh, to go over the talking points for our legislative tour. And then um, don't tell our consultant this, but the next day I spent rewriting all of his talking points. Um, because just before the legislative tour, he said, I wrote that for you. And I held my tongue going, I rewrote the whole thing. Um, and then I did uh, five out of the six days at the DEQ court case um, where we're the intervener, where we're the intervener. And then the, the day that I missed um, was the day that we had our legislative tour with uh, the guests of Congresswoman Salinas and Congresswoman Bonamici, as well as the mayors of Beaverton, Hillsborough, and Sherwood, and then tonight's meeting. Well, for me, since I could not be here in August, mine's a, a little bit longer uh, date-wise. So going back all the way to July 31st, uh, I attended the Bull Run Water Tour, which was really great to get to experience the Bull Run Watershed. Uh, and then we had our August work session. And then I met with uh, Paul Matthews and we set up a, a plan to invite uh, legislators for the tour. And then I've had several bi-monthly check-ins with the CEO since. And on the 14th of September, I had, I went to a constituent uh, coffee for Senator Luke Frederick virtually. And then we have tonight's board meeting. Moving on to topics to be raised by commissioners. Do we have any topics to be raised by commissioners tonight? I do. I actually, uh, we moved. And I no longer live in Aloha. So it's probably inappropriate for me to be going to the Galoa Business Association meeting. Uh, we're still, I'm still in the district. Don't panic. I'm 9078. <laughs> so, but somebody needs to go to the Aloha Business Association meeting. I didn't think that was appropriate for me to be that person anymore. Okay. Any other topics? Okay. Uh, this is now the point where we move into public comment. Public comment time is set aside for persons wishing to address the board on items on the consent agenda and matters not on the agenda. Additional public comment will be invited on agenda items as they are presented. Do we have any persons who would like to comment? Not seeing any this evening. Okay. We'll now move on to the consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine and may be enacted in one motion without separate discussion. Any board members may request that an item be removed by motion for discussion and separate action. Any items requested to be removed from the consent agenda for separate discussion will be considered immediately after the board has approved those items which do not require discussion. Looks like we have the August 21st, 2024 board meeting minutes. Do I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as presented? Uh, Mr. Chair, so moved. I'll second. Wonderful. All those in favor, please say A. 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 That motion passes. We will now move on to the business agenda. And the Rosanna Reservoir and Pump Station Property Resolution of Need, Pete Boone, will be presenting to us. Thank you, President Fisher and commissioners. Uh, the district has identified a need to acquire real property to site the replacement of the existing Sunset Reservoir and Pump Station, as well as the Rosander Reservoir. Both of these facilities are nearing the end of their useful lives and have seismic deficiencies, making them vulnerable to failure in an earthquake. Additionally, the current storage volume uh, in our 575 pressure zone, of which these two reservoirs reside, uh, it has been identified as being deficient in master planning efforts. Uh, so we need to find a place to site additional storage. 
The district has identified a property at 8550 Southwest Barnes Road as the best site to construct replacement facilities due to its proximity to existing infrastructure, its ground elevation, and having sufficient acreage. These uh, existing Sunset and Reservoir facilities will remain online and must remain online during the construction of their replacements, uh, making a new site um, all the more important to acquire. So, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions, but staff recommends that the uh, board adopt resolution 17-24, declaring a public need for real property located at 8550 Southwest Barnes Road in Fort Lenore. Are there any questions from the board? Okay, seeing none, I would like to entertain a motion to adopt resolution 1724, declaring public necessity to acquire fee title to real property for the Rosander Reservoir and Pump Station project. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes. We have adopted resolution 1724. And with that, I will adjourn our meeting. The day or I? A I? I like A rhyming with nay. Just say nay. Yeah, right.